Hello everyone and welcome. This is General History and this is part 10 of our Ultimate General Civil War playthrough. We have just completed the Battle of Shiloh and now we are moving on to the Peninsula Campaign, which was McClellan's uh, ambitious invasion of the Virginia Peninsula, uh, where he would take about 100,000 men, land them just to the east of Richmond on the Virginia Pen Peninsula, and march them north to Richmond, where he would uh, fight uh, Joe Johnson's forces in defense. Now, Joe Johnson only had about, I believe it was 60,000 troops at Richmond, so he was significantly outnumbered, uh, but he did have uh, McClellan on a peninsula, so he had good defense positions. However, uh, the other part of the strategy of uh, McClellan's invasion was to have McDowell come from Washington and uh, pass north through, I mean, south through Fredericksburg and then attack Richmond from the north, uh, as well as having Nathaniel Banks hold the Shenandoah Valley. Now, Nathaniel Banks had about uh, 30,000 troops, and the person put in charge of holding the valley and putting pressure on uh, Banks was, of course, Thomas Jackson, who was just coming off a very rough winter for him. He had the Romney expedition, and he was actually almost, well, he almost uh, stepped down from command. There's some interesting uh, things that happened during the Romney uh, expedition. We won't get into that, but I but I would uh, implore you to check it out. It's very interesting to think about what would have happened had, uh, had he stepped down, uh, how this, this whole part of the war would have turned out but instead we do get Jackson's famous Valley Campaign now uh, Jackson's Valley Campaign started off a little rough uh, he was originally forced out of Winchester although he was uh, vowed to return he now he left without a fight uh, because he was severely outnumbered uh, w when uh, Banks had secured Winchester and thus pretty much securing the valley he had diverted forces uh, to the assault of uh, the northern assault down uh, to Richmond, well, I guess the su southern thrust to the north of Richmond, uh, as well as McDowell had started his advance once the valley was secure. Now, seeing the opportunity, uh, Jackson then attacked uh, went, uh, Kernstown. He had moved his forces against troops, the Union Army at Kernstown. He believed he actually outnumbered the Union forces there. I believe he had about 4,000 troops, but the Union did have actually about eight, uh, 7,000 or 8,000 troops at Kernstown. He, his inf his uh, intelligence was wrong. Like I said, he believed he outnumbered them. Uh, it was actually a hard-fought battle, and he almost turned the tide, uh, but was eventually forced back at Kernstown. Uh, now, this actually proved to be uh, a strategic victory, even though Kimball, who was the general who was holding current sound, uh, did uh, defeat Jackson, giving Jackson his only loss of the war. And actually, uh, Kimball uh, was the only general to beat both Lee and Jackson during the war. Uh, so that's an interesting fact there. But this did, as I said, uh, prove to be a strategic victory, uh, as it now the forces under Banks that were then marching to uh, support the Southern Thrust were then recalled back to the valley, and then McDowell's forces, who were uh, thrusting uh, southwards, were also told to halt, which uh, put a burden on McClellan, who uh, was really expecting these forces to continue marching south. Now, what then happened next is Fremont's forces in the Allegheny uh, were holding a town uh, near in the in Virginia called McDowell, uh, Jackson then def uh, attacks and defeats uh, uh, this army at McDowell, which uh, forces Banks, who was marching south, to retreat to the town of Strasburg. Uh, Jackson then marches north, but in instead of attacking Strasburg, he attacks the less, because Banks had about 11,000 troops then in Strasburg. He then attacks uh, the lesser defended with about a thousand troops, uh, town of Front Royal, where he pretty much smashes the garrison there. Jackson at this point had been uh, reinforced and had about 
I think it was 16,000 men against the 900 defenders and pretty much uh, took about 700 casualties or 700 captured Union soldiers during this battle. And then Jackson and Banks would then uh, reach both sort of race to Winchester as uh, Banks would then retreat from Strasburg, like I said, and but and would get to Winchester first and take up positions there, and that's where we begin this first battle of Winchester. So we built up our forces, oh, we're still on that screen, uh, back to full strength, and we started building out the second corps. So we're gonna go ahead and launch into the uh, battle of Winchester. Uh, so we decided to launch offensive operations on Union forces in the Shenandoah Valley, pre Valley, preventing them from reinforcing their offense, offensive against Richmond. We must use bold strategy by employing audacity and rapid, unpredictable movements on, on the whole valley. Therefore, you, you'll use a small, flexible force. The rest of your army will take positions at the outskirts of our capital. The Union commander and the departments of Shenandoah uh, Major General Nathaniel P. Banks is attempting to reorganize his army at Winchester and defend the town, move swiftly, and attack the Union force. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and start. I'm going to bring my first corps, because my second corps definitely doesn't have the units. We can only bring uh, eight brigades of the 15 that we have, but that's not too big of a deal. I still think we probably have enough troops. I'm probably going to bring some of my more green troops. Uh, that way it doesn't cost as much to uh, rearm them after the battle. It seems the Federals have, the Federals decided to give a... Oh, let's restart that. It seems the Federals decided to give a battle and deployed around the town of Winchester. Our scouts report that General Banks has no more than four brigades supported by artillery and light units. You have a disposal of a significant force to crush the Federal Army and recapture the city. Uh, the enemy is outnumbered, so you need to prevail on the field, bring us victory, and inflict at least 30 more ca percent casualties to the enemy. Godspeed, General. Alright, so right off the back, we're actually in the wrong position. Uh, the Confederates did not attack from the north, they attacked from the south. So, actually, I'm trying to figure out how the map is oriented, because it actually looks like that this might be the east. I mean the west, east, north, south. I don't know, this could be... Because, uh, so, Jackson marched uh, his forces along the two roads, leading uh, south to north into Winchester, which were the uh, Front, Royal Winchester, Front Royal Winchester Road, which may be this road here. Uh, that was uh, taken by Ewell. Uh, under Jackson's command, and Jackson then took the rest of his forces up the uh, the Valley Pike, which may be this road. I don't know. This, like I said, this map is a little off. Uh, I actually live less than 13 miles away from Winchester. Uh, this is so. This is obviously a battlefield I've seen, been to before. Uh, so this is, like I said, I actually think the map is oriented wrong. I believe this is actually the north over here. This is the south. So I believe these were actually the roads that they would have come up. Because this looks like Bow what would be Bowers Hill over here. So yeah, I believe the map is a little incorrectly oriented. Let's see. I have one gun battery. Kind of like the setup. Although, like I said, I want to try and get rid of want to bring some of my lesser troops from the 3rd Division. And maybe the 2nd. I'm okay with the 1 gun battery as well as the 1... Oh, I don't want to bring the Innocents. I guess I have to. Oh, Bristow. I think he's my new unit that I transferred in. So, like I said, I think the map might be uh, oriented wrong. I'm not sure. Uh, at least it sure seems that way. I'll leave... Uh, I'll have two units sort of flanked this way, just in case there's some 
on the outskirts, the rest of my force will come this way. So I'll use these two units come this way, the rest of my force will come this way. So let me stack up my forces over here. And then let's do it. Alright, so let's go ahead and start the battle. Now there will really oh wow, right off the bat. <laughs> Well, let's go ahead and play that out. Now, there really, really isn't too much to the battle. It was actually a pretty uh, simply fought battle. Uh, like I said, so I'll just really go over the history really quick. Cause I, only because I believe this is how the map is actually oriented and we're actually approaching from the west and this is actually the south, the southern roads because it sure seems like these are the southern, southern roads attacking leading to Winchester. Like I said, you will attack from this road, uh, or this would have, if I'm right in my orientation, this is the uh, Front Royal Winchester Pike, or the Winchester Road, uh, and which is the road that you would have uh, went up through. Uh, you will attack, would have been the first to start attacking near Dawn, uh, he would have approached and uh, met with forces along the uh, what was it? the Mill the Millwood Road, which is now now I believe Millwood Road is now Jubal Early Drive. I believe that's what this road is supposed to be here. Like I said, I'm pretty sure this is I'm almost positive this is how it's oriented, and this is actually the south. Um, okay, I've never actually shown. Okay, I don't know actually what that does. Uh, I thought maybe it showed the orientation, but that was the mill. I believe this is supposed to be the Millwood Millwood Road here, which is now, like I said, Jubal Early Drive uh, in the town. He would have attacked here. He would have flanked the Union positions here, which would have broke them, broken them and forced them back in town. Like I said, Jackson would approach from this road, where he would take duel with guns on Bowers Hill, which I believe this is. Or maybe this is Bowers Hill. There's a little bit of an elevation here. Actually, I believe this is actually would have been where Bowers Hill would have been if this map is oriented right. Uh, which is now where Hanley High School is uh, in town. Uh, Union guns, like I say, he would pretty much bring up his own guns and they would duel back and forth for most of the morning until he sent uh, the Louisiana Tigers, yes, those same Tigers that I have named Wheat's Tigers, they are now the Louisiana Tiger because they're now under command of Richard Taylor, uh, not Robert, Robert O. Wheat. Uh, they would then move uh, up and clear out the guns with support of some other uh, brigades. I don't remember what brigades those were, but they would clear out the Union guns, force them back into town, and eventually the Union forces would break and retreat all the way up to uh, Martinsburg and then to Williamsport. The Union would lose about 2,000 men in the battle to the Confederates, about 400. So that was the Battle of Winchester on a historical standpoint. So let's go ahead and play it from the non historical standpoint. Uh, so let's go ahead. Like I said, I'm going to advance these troops down and along this road while the rest of my forces. We'll advance along this road and into town. I'll move these guys to the fields to the north, where I'll also put my artillery. And, uh, trying to trip. Trying to drag this, I keep messing up. Oh my god. Alright, we'll go ahead and just play. At least they're moving. Alright, so advancing. Go ahead and fast forward a little bit. Edwards moving as well. well. Do slow it down. I'll also deploy skirmishes from these two battalions. Oh, 
these two brigades and move them into the woods. Uh, watch your skirmishes. Where are your skirmishes? Get in this, do it. Break those skirmishers. I'm sure what's going on here. Okay. Skirmishers just go after that cannon. Actually, see if you go after the cannon, these skirmishers you attack him. I can't tell if I have three divisions in there. There. Oh wow. They have a lot of forces in these woods. Oh well. Crap, get out of there. Nope, get out. Get out of there. Just get back to you. At least we know there's forces in those woods. Scott, you move into town. <laughs> Not going too well, actually. on their rear and do some damage. Hopefully we can get some canister. What the heck? Where did those cavalry units come from?
I'm a well, all the charge. Oh well. Point blank range against skirmishers, that works pretty well. What's Scott doing? Not too good. Maybe I'm thinking I probably should have taken better troops during this battle. It's not expecting so much enemy infantry, that's for sure. Scott, the only person I have in town, just his commander just took, uh, just died or was wounded. Sorry, I'm literally just staring down their supplies. Trying to get up on, but in their rear. So this is a lot more intense than I was actually expecting. I'm actually having a tougher time with this than I, than I had even at uh, Shiloh. Oh my god, they got skirmishers everywhere. Right, let me get... Stu holding strong in Winchester. I'm starting to push from the rear. All skirmishes back in. Once Lane rallies, I might have him try and get behind these skirmishes here. Of 
Well, Stuart is now off gallivanting. What are you doing, Scott? Hold. All got pushed back. Lane, you get into these woods. Dirt needs to hurry up and get back. Hollis is about to rally and I need to protect my artillery now. Hall has now rallied. Scott is now finally losing it. Got 30 minutes. We're almost pushing them out. One more off, and then I think I'm gonna move him close to the town. I think Dury can handle himself okay. I can get Lane on Donnelly's rear. Gordon's do there. Get a volley off at least. Alright, Paul, oh, you move in. Bristol, you move in. Scott, move forward. Ammo left anyway. I am just broke. I don't know if we're gonna be able to force them out in three minutes. At least I've inflicted more casualties. I can continue to fight. All I need to do is break Gordon, I think. I should be able to get up there, Lane. Break Gordon, and we can win this. Hopefully, Scott, huge bomb. God, Hollis is coming in from the rear. I'm 
doing? All right, so we got contested Winchester, but now we got to hold for 40 minutes. Stewart can get that cavalry, uh, not cavalry, uh, supply wagon. All this is broken again. Did get the supply wagon. By moving that artillery in, been able to sort of use them as a freaking shotgun against any of these forces up close to the uh point we need to take. Bristol, you stop. Hold your position. All we need to do is hold. And you get into town as well. Oh God. I didn't realize Stuart was out in the air like that. I don't care if they get their supplies back. I just, I just don't want to lose Stuart. more minutes we have to hold Winchester oh no we lost Stuart oh, that's unfortunate now I don't know if because he just broke I don't know if the general comes back or the commanding officer comes back or not I don't know but we did lose his whole Division. Alright, let's fast forward. It looks like we're in a pretty good defensive position. I don't think we're going to lose Winchester at this point. So this ended up being a lot bloodier than I was hoping it would be. Very get you some more shit back. Tried to take that supply wagon, but that just wasn't happening. Alright, so let's finish the battle. We we did it. So, we were victorious. It did take to after. Technically, we should have run out of time, but we did take Winchester. We had about a well, pretty evenly matched match for infantry. They had a little bit more cavalry than we did. They had a lot more guns than we did. And they did take more casualties than we did, just by a little bit, though. Uh, they lost uh, 23 guns actually holy crap but we did lose all of Stewart's cavalry even though it's only saying 500 we did lose that whole division so we held Winchester Bristow was my best unit not really though I mean none of my units pretty much it was pretty much a give-and-take this whole battle Manuel Scott was wounded uh, we got about a uh, company or a brigade's worth of Springfield's back we did receive some more of our Colts. We captured some Lorenz. Six more 12 pound howitzers. So we actually have. We captured 12 in Shiloh. So we. Or 10. So I think we might have a whole. Uh, a free brigade. Uh, yeah, brigade's worth of uh, howitzers. Alright, so that was the Battle of Winchester. Now, it is a victory. So what vi uh, Winchester ended up doing. The reason it was so strategic, what the whole Valley campaign ended up doing really, is uh, this particular victory though at Winchester diverted uh, McDowell's Corps, which was uh, 
It reached to about Fredericksburg and was uh, marching, like I said, in that southern thrust towards Richmond. It sort of diverted him uh, back to the mountains, uh, or not back to the mountains, but towards the mountains to try and uh, clear out uh, Stonewall's brigade. Because Lincoln's biggest threat or worry was that they would, uh, the Confederates would then launch an assault on Washington. Uh, so that's uh, was his biggest worry at the time. Uh, so we win the Homeland Defense Cross. We get the win, so we get one career point for to our reputation. Only 69,000, another 4,000 recruits. So we got enough recruits to uh, earn back what we lost, but it's really the money at this point, uh, trying to uh, get everything back. Now, we did lose our leader there. I don't know if I want to put a major in charge. I think I want at least a colonel. So I'll go a small colonel. I'll go with Todd Harris. We'll go ahead. These people, these guys, we'll just give all rookie recruits to. Alright, so the division. Oh, no, his dirty too. We're now back to full strength. We did lose. Uh. Oh no, yes, looks like we did. Yep, we officially lost Jeb Stewart. Stewart is no longer a general for us. He didn't really die, he didn't say he died, but he is no longer a general for us. So we'll go ahead and put, let's see. Uh, let's see. Could just go ahead and move Forrest to that division. I don't want to do that. He's at least three, so it's probably going to cost... Oh, wow. It's going to cost him a lot to get him up to... Uh, so we'll get him up to 400 for now. Maybe... How much is that going to cost? 6,000. 6, so yeah, we'll get him up to 400 at least for now. Alright. So not a full cavalry brigade, but close enough. So let's start building out the second core. He had Springfields. Do I have enough to... Oh, Bristol needs to be brought back up to full as well. Uh, so let's go ahead... No... Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and equip them with Lorenzo. It's going to cost a little bit of money. But that does give me a whole nother... Uh, 2,000 Springfields to get to this group. Let's see. Uh, let's see, what else can we do? I'm trying to give my good soldiers good weapons. Or my more experienced soldiers better weapons, that is. Uh, I'll go ahead and... We have enough for some more Lorenz. Yeah, I'll go with Lorenz rifles. Yeah. They're a little more efficient than the Mississippis. So we'll go ahead and equip these guys with Lorenz. Yes, which... Oh, God. I have Beauregard in charge of that. It's technically... Let me go ahead and... Get a colonel in charge. Same with this, uh, well, we'll do a major for now. Actually, let's go to the armory, sell off some of these weapons that we're not going to use. We'll use all that eventually. Uh, so, money continues to be an issue. I really need to get my politics up, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's put another point to politics. I really want to max out politics, like I said, as quickly as possible. Because I want to get this unit as highly high up as I can. Yes, oh, not Burgard. We don't have enough for. Oh, we'll go. A cheap lieutenant colonel. Go meager. Two thousand men. And I think that's, well, let's go ahead and 
we can bring in those howitzers. We have all 16. Give him a. Uh, let's give him an expensive lieutenant colonel. There we go. 400 men, 16 gun howitzer. So the first division of the second corps is almost filled out. I have to fold, except for my cavalry, of a full first corps. And that's it. That's going to be it for this episode, I think. Next battle, we'll play Cross Keys. Uh, and then, of course, Port Republic. Uh, yeah. All right. So prepare for that for the next episode. But for now, this is General History, and I'm going to sign off. So thank you all for watching. Bye-bye.